Feels like I don't know you You don't feel the same Floating into space All the things we've been through Are fading into blue I would drive to Neptune Just to love you more Good morning! Today is a tubing and day So I'm heading in there I um, have just got ready in some comfortable clothing I kind of like wearing an oversized shirt because I just don't feel like wearing anything too like restrictive or something and I worked in an office for like a year and I found it really like ugh, I don't know when you overheat or you get irritated or you're trying to just concentrate on something anyway baggy shirt uh, blue jeans my normal boots that I always wear and then I've got my favorite necklace that I always wear for my friends in New Zealand and then also decided to wear another ring today because I only ever wear my wedding rings but I really like this ring that my friend bought me from New Zealand so wearing that as well and then my hair is just completely slicked back because I just cannot <laughs> I cannot deal with my hair at the moment I'm gonna try the curly girl method soon but for the time being it's straightened and back so that I can just concentrate so yeah let's go so if you're on my Instagram, you'll know that I've recently become addicted to audiobooks. And so I'm just listening to that on the first train. I'm going through the Harry Potter series at the moment because I haven't read them in the longest time. And then as soon as I started actually studying, I had to switch it over to instrumental music because I can't study with anything that has words. One of my favorite songs that just happened to come up when I clicked go on Spotify. And then when I'm on the train, I generally just try and do readings from PDFs and I highlight them so I don't have to worry about trying to copy over quotes or type out quotes while I'm just working on my tablet. And unfortunately for me, the one that I thought I was going to be working on wasn't downloaded. So I had to wait for it to connect. And then yeah, I just took some notes while I was on the train. The train takes about an hour and a half from my house. It's only 45 minutes from the Hauptbahnhof to Tübingen. So it's not that long, but it's long enough that I want to do something. And so I generally use that time to try and get some good readings done. How I take notes, I just highlight as I go and then I'll copy over the quotes and make comments on them on the applications that I'm using at the time. I generally change the emphasis of the quotes by color. I'm a visual learner and so if it's just a general quote that I want to keep note of, I'll do it in yellow. But if it's something that's pretty important or quite relevant to my topic, then I'll do it in green. I don't know why I picked those colors. It just happened out that way. And then when I got to uni, I just always stopped to look at this bridge because I think it's pretty and it's nice to admire the view when I'm doing my 20 minute walk. It just so happened today that there was a whole bunch of fish out that I thought were really cute. So I just stopped and watched those because what else do you have to do except for find joy in your day? <laughs> so yeah, I just did that. And then when I finally got to uni, I was thankfully able to use one of the desks. I work at the moment in a shared office. I am getting my own office soon, which is really exciting, but for the moment I'm working in a shared office and so it's kind of a hot desk situation. If you manage to get there before nobody else is on the computers, then congratulations, you get to use a computer. Because it's university holidays at the moment, all of the people who follow semesters aren't in at the moment and so I was actually alone in the office. I'm a double screen person, I felt like I got stuck onto the double screen system and I can't get off it so I was very thankful to be able to work at this screen today. And kind of as I was talking before I'm kind of just taking notes today. I started off by copying over the notes that I'd highlighted on the train so that I could copy them and make notes on them while they were still fresh in my brain. I sometimes don't do this, especially if I'm working on a book rather than an article. I'll generally go back over and copy the notes over when I finish the book, but I just felt like doing that today. Anyway, it's a bit of a lengthy process and I can go through it in more detail if anyone is interested. I'm definitely not a normal note taker and I kind of realized that in my undergrad. And then <laughs> it was lunchtime and normally I just sit at my desk while I eat lunch. I will watch a YouTube video or I will catch up on some emails or do something. And then after lunch, I switched tasks because I was getting a bit sick of copying out 
quotes and sometimes that just is what happens. So I switched over to taking notes from my primary source. Hello. Um, so I'm just at uni at the moment and there's a bit of a break and there's like nobody here and the people who are opposite my office aren't here anymore as well. So I feel a bit more comfortable speaking and not like disturbing anyone. Anyway, um, this is the room that I work in, but I am just sitting at one of the desks at the moment that has a computer so that I can work on a double screen rather than just on my tablet. Um, I try not to bring my laptop to university because I find it, yeah, just a bit heavy and clunky when there are computers here. So I'm kind of alternating between readings and taking notes today. I finished off taking some, oh, I'll just turn you around. I finished off taking some notes and I use OneNote to take my notes. Like I can do a more in-depth video on how I do my notes and everything. But I was just going through and making notes and then I was looking for readings that they suggested, which I've made a list of over here on the university website, the university library website. And then outside of that, I have just been taking notes on my primary sources. So I, I'll do one that I have done. So I just finished this one, for example. And so I've got like the reference of where it is in my source, and then I've taken it down in English, and then German, and then Latin, so that I can go through and compare the different translations. I'm gonna pre primarily working with the Latin, but I'm originally finding the examples in English. And this English translation that I'm using isn't great, and so I've also copied down the German so that I can use it as an extra reference. So yeah, that's what I'm taking at the moment. All of the ones that I have left to do, I've just got three left to do today, are the ones that I've marked DL, meaning I haven't done the German, which is Deutsch, or the Latin, yet. So it means I've just done the English, which I did at home, and I still need to do the German and Latin. And then I'm doing it from this book. So this one is the Gregory of Tours book that I'm taking it from, which is not focusing on, typical. So this is the Gregory of Tours book that I'm taking on, and I'm using this copy because it's got the German on one side and the Latin on the next side, which is very helpful. So yeah, sorry I'm talking quietly because I'm still like in the medieval library and I don't want to be disturbing anyone in any of the other rooms, but yeah, that's kind of what I've been doing. I um, had lunch earlier, I think I videoed that, and then I've also got my mug of hot water, which I talked about on Instagram the other day. I just, I don't know what it is. I just love hot water. It's really comforting. And like, I used to sing quite a lot. And I um, was a singing teacher for like eight years. And I just got into the habit of having hot water because I found tea, I don't know, some teas clogged up my throat a bit, kind of like coffee did, or milky drinks. And some teas I just got, like I thrashed them. And so I just got sick of the flavor. So now I just have hot water. I don't know, <laughs> it's a bit strange. Anyway, I'm gonna keep working. I'm somebody who needs to have some sort of something in the background like music or sound and i feel like i get a bit sick of listening to music while i'm doing like like readings when i'm doing readings i listen to instrumental music and i get a bit sick of it if that's all i ever listen to so at the moment i've got glee on in the background while i'm just copying notes because i don't need to take this in like i've already found the examples in the english translation and so i'm literally just copying the other translations in so yeah, anyway, I'll get back to work. I'll maybe set you up. It depends on if anyone comes in. I don't really feel comfortable videoing anybody else, obviously. But anyway, I'm just gonna get to work and I will see you soon. Um, excuse the voice because I had a mini coughing fit and now I've partially lost my voice. I'll explain it after dinner. But, <laughs> which, oh my gosh. We're just in the middle of making dinner. Well, Luke's made dinner, he's dishing it up now. But I got home and then Luke had to go straight into some calls so I just did some YouTube stuff. Um, and while he's dishing up, <laughs> we're trying it. So we're going to Köln. Wow, I can't speak. We're going to Köln on Friday for a concert. Um, and Luke was just saying that he has a friend that said that all the other states have dropped their COVID restrictions pretty much. And then Baden-Württemberg is doing it on 
the 2nd of April. And I was like, oh, but we still have to do a quick test to go to our concert on Saturday. Yeah, it's in North Rhine-Westphalia. So I was saying that it's not in baden württemberg and Luke thought Köln was in baden württemberg To be fair, I have no idea. No, it's fine. <laughs> North Rhine-Westphalia. Actually, how many states are there in Germany? There are lots of states. But I want to know what that is in English. No, in German. I don't want to know what it is in... Nordrhein... No, don't translate. Nord... Nordrhein-Westfalen. Okay. 16 states in Germany. We should probably know that. Are some of them really small? And Bavaria is the biggest state. Okay. Oh my gosh. I can't speak. Germany states. Apparently Google Maps in that doesn't help. Some of them must be really small. I'm pretty sure that some of them are small. Didn't Miriam say that just Berlin states. was a state? City, like a city state. Yeah. Oh no, not maps. No. Jerk. Okay, let's look at this colored map. Hamburg is tiny. Berlin is its own one, I'm pretty sure. Hamburg is state. Yeah. Because Miriam also said that. And Bremen looks like it's its own state. Saarland. I didn't even realize that was its own state. Who's that? Near. Trier, that place that your client said that we should go to. Saarbrücken. So they've got Rhineland, Westphalia, Baden Württemberg, Bavaria, Hessen, Thuringia, Saxony. Oh, is that where Saxony is? Oh, but then there's Saxony Anhalt. Brandenburg, Berlin, Mecklenburg, West Pomerania. <clears throat> Lower Saxony. Oh, is that where Schleswig-Holstein is? Wow. Honestly, my geography of Germany has gotten so much better since we moved here. Well, of the whole of Europe, actually, since we moved here. Anyway, so explain my voice. I have this thing, apparently. I don't want to self-diagnose, but I have this thing. I've always had it. I think it's like <clears throat> what Google says, and we all trust Google. Is it's like acute asthma where it's exercise induced asthma and not like I have asthma but apparently some people I'm really not explaining this all. I'll put it up here on the screen what it is but after you do vigorous exercise your throat constricts and you basically can't breathe which sounds like normal asthma but it's only after extreme exercise. Um, and I ran for my train. And I ended up in a coughing fit on the train. And trying to explain to people that I don't have COVID. But yeah, anyway, we're going to have dinner. We're going to have a very healthy dinner. We're having soup. Can you see? Soup. Yeah, anyway. And then I'm just going to keep working. <laughs> Looks changed the colours to purple. The only problem is that... We've got purple lighting, which is really nice, but then we've got the yellow fairy lights. <laughs> Ooh, dance party. Oh, now we've got the multiple colours. Green and purple, depending on where you are. I still can't really speak, sorry. So, we'll see how this goes. We had dinner, and then... Um, oh my gosh, I'm still struggling to speak. We had dinner and then got on with some work. Luke had a few calls for work. And then I organized some videos for Instagram and TikTok. I filmed a whole bunch over the last few weeks and I just haven't had time to edit them. I find it, I find it super easy to video like while I'm going with stuff and while we're traveling. Oh my gosh, my throat. Um, and I just haven't had a chance to edit them and I did a lot of uni work today and my RSI was getting pretty bad So I needed to just take a break um, I find editing isn't too hard because I can kind of just press buttons on the keyboard and it's not entirely my mouse Anyway, so I've done that. I've now shut down my computer and then I downloaded my latest book for book club 
I'm part of a book club with some of my really good friends in New Zealand and the book that we are doing is The Magpie Society. Oh, you can't see that. Can we see that? Kind of. Ugh. Okay, whatever. I'll just stick a photo up here. But we're doing The Magpie Society. It was my choice this month and I'm somebody who generally chooses books because of controversy or something and this one I just thought would be super interesting to talk about because I read Zoella's, if you know Zoella, she's a YouTuber, or Zoe Sugg. I read the books that she wrote when she was under her old management company, which were very like childlike. And then this book she's written since she's moved away from that company. So I thought I'd try it out. And I thought it'd be cool to talk with my book club about. So yeah, that's what I have downloaded so that I can start reading that tonight in bed. But for the time being, I'm gonna put this massive load of laundry away. We're going away on Friday to Köln um, for a concert. We're gonna go see Avi Kaplan and I'm so excited. So we're gonna get away, go away and I just, we decided to get through a whole bunch of washing before we go. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna listen to my, wow. I'm going to listen to my audiobook while I'm doing that because <clears throat> I used to, like put a video on in the background, but then you can't see what's happening because you're walking back and forth. So I'm just gonna listen to my audiobook. And plus it found that it means I get through more books, which is a plus. Yeah, so let's do that. And so like I said, I was just getting ready um, for bed and cleaning up the house so that it was ready for our trip to Köln. I unfortunately set the camera up wrong and you're gonna get this very blurry, wonderful time-lapse of me tidying the apartment. So. Sorry about that, <laughs> but I am once again listening to the audiobook and just tidying up. So thanks for coming along on this very random haphazard video of a day in the life of a PhD student. I am probably going to do a more in-depth video at some point discussing like exactly what I'm doing and especially documenting my new office. Documenting? Wow, good job! <laughs> I'm documenting my new office and kind of how I'm gonna hopefully structure my weeks leading into that but yeah thanks for watching and I hope that you enjoyed the video if you want more daily updates make sure to follow me on my social media otherwise have a good day or night wherever you are in the world um, I really thank you for watching my video joining the um, the journey that I'm going on and yeah I'll see you later bye